North Korea has successfully carried out a hydrogen bomb test the country's state television has announced. It came after an earthquake measuring around six on the Richter scale was detected in the country. It took place in the northeastern province bordering China and Russia and was felt to in both, both of those countries. RT's Kate Partridge has the latest. There's been widespread condemnation coming in from Russia and China as well because this move comes in violation of the UN Security Council resolution. Just ahead of, of that new testing that we heard about, North Korea announced through their central news agency that the country had developed an advanced hydrogen bomb. This was very briefly then followed by that earthquake, 6.3 on the Richter scale in the northeast of the country. Now, what North Korea then said is that they've developed a particular type of warhead that's been designed so it can be on an intercontinental ballistic missile, the likes of which was tested last Tuesday as it flew over Japan. US President Donald Trump at the time, he said that all options were on the table, and this contributed to the strong rhetoric, the feisty rhetoric that he'd used throughout the escalation of tensions on the Korean Peninsula. North Korea better get their act together, or they're going to be in trouble like few nations ever have been in trouble in this world. Okay? This man will not get away with what he's doing, believe me. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. This is the first nuclear test of Trump's administration, the last one coming in September 2016. Well, in the meantime, the US and South Korea have been practicing widespread military drills. Also, Japanese fighter planes have also been going overhead as well, much to the annoyance of Pyongyang. And since this latest testing, South Korea has also responded with some very strong language. We decided to discuss with the US the deployment of the most powerful strategic assets of the American military that would enable us to neutralize North Korea's nuclear facility and missiles and show our strike capabilities. Well, meanwhile, Moscow, though, has been calling for calm. They believe the only way to solve the problems on the peninsula is by negotiation. They believe that all the interested parties should get round the table, resume dialogue, as that's the only way to solve the problems. Any other means, President Putin, to quote him, says, are futile. OK, well, let's discuss the latest escalation of tensions then in the region with international and independent Asia strategist Andrew K.P. Lung. Um, good afternoon to you, Andrew. Firstly, what do you think will be America's reaction to this, uh, given that it is the first nuclear test on Trump's watch and what he has said before? Well, as expected, it's a lot of uh, even more sound and fury, but I don't think it's going to solve the problem as has been demonstrated. I think the time for coercion is over because uh, I think that North Korea has uh, successfully crossed the watershed and has demonstrated its ability to de deliver a very powerful nuclear weapon. Um, it's, uh, if it's not a, a full-scale hydrogen bomb, at least it's as powerful as the nuclear bomb dropped in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And then uh, North Korea has already, already demonstrated its ability to deliver um, uh, is missiles flying over Japan near um, to where near Guam is. So I think that the, the threshold uh, has been crossed, the watershed has been crossed, the time for uh, a lot of rhetoric and also sanctions um, um, uh, is, is, is really over. But what the North Korean wants is of course not a war, because a war would mean the demise of their regime. What they want is an uh, iron cast assurance uh, of the regime's stability. And I think that the time has now um, um, with, um, uh, got to move on uh, from um, uh, talks uh, to um, uh, a, new, uh, uh, a Korean Peninsula Stability Pact uh, involving all the countries uh, in the region. Um, the pact should, uh, of course, um, make sure that there is a de-escalation on all sides. Um, uh all right, Shalom. Because I'm still going to say that I will buy you know, shy. Well, and salutations to the brothers that's doing the truth and sincerity. Now, as you can see, uh, you know, America and uh, North Korea going back and forth. Uh, North Korea just test, successfully tested a uh, hydrogen bomb, and they uh, also, uh, if you read this article, Putin and Xi agree to appropriately deal with North Korea tests, urge all sides to show restraint. I'm going to go to the bottom real quick. It says, um, 
On Sunday, North Korea state media reported that Pyongyang successfully tested a hydrogen bomb, which can be mounted on an intercontinental ballistic missile. The test followed Pyongyang's claims that it developed a new, more advanced hydrogen nuke that is small enough to be fitted on an ICBM. The bomb test was a perfect success and was a meaningful step to complete the North's nuclear weapons program, state television reported, right? So, you know, like I was saying, yeah, North Korea uh, got some, uh, you know, some, uh, successfully tested uh, some uh, nuclear, um, some hydrogen bombs that can fit on our ICBM missiles, man. And, you know, and the U.S. is, uh, you know, so-called saying that they're going to step in. And as you can see, they uh, this this guy right here wants America to step in. But um, America not going to be able to step in because, uh, I mean, even if America did step in, China and uh, Russia said they wasn't having that, man. And that's in this, uh, this uh, article. So, you know, um, at this point in time, it's just... Uh, Women's of wars right now, man. You know, everybody gearing up for battle. Everybody think that America can go to war with um, North Korea, but, you know, they haven't went to war yet, man. But that's part of a uh, prophecy, man. And, you know, like the scriptures say, uh, we're living in the time of prophecy. We're supposed to be watching for stuff like this, man. So uh, this is Matthew chapter 24, verse, I'm sorry, verse 1. It says, And Yahweh Shai went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for... To shew him the buildings of the temple. And Yahushai said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come. Slug you. In my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, right? And that's uh that's a lot of these church pastors. Uh a lot of these so called Israelite groups. It says, And ye shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars, right? So this right here is a rumor of war, man. See that ye be not troubled, right? So you're not supposed to be troubled. You got a lot of people out there that's troubled behind this. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, right? So we're getting close, man, you know. But this is uh, just another uh, prophecy uh, under the belt. But as you can see, this is uh, it's ramping up. Uh, it's ramping up hella fast, and it's, it's getting serious and stuff, man. But that's all a part of biblical prophecy, man. But um, uh, soon to come, you know, there's going to be an altercation uh, with, with, with America and a lot of these nations that's, uh, that's uh, so-called with America, man. Because a lot of these test drills America holding with these nations, man, they're going to turn on America, man. And that's that's prophecy, man. So you know, be watching out for that prophecy, man. This is uh, and, and, and you know, a lot of these nations, uh, like the EU per se, you know, and uh, uh, NATO, they've been um, they've been uh, you know, having their little disputes with America here and there and everything too. But you know, you gotta keep watch with that because uh, that's gonna get serious now, man. You know, but um, simultaneously, while you got that, you got the chip being passed down and stuff, man. But you know the prophecies are rolling, man, and uh, all, you, all you can do is just pray, you know, fast and keep up with them through the spirit of Yahweh Shemayim Shai. But this is uh, Revelations chapter seventeen, verse twelve. It says the ten horns. Let me see. Hold on, slap me. Okay, yes, yeah, like it. This is uh, Revelation chapter 10, 17, verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. The whore is America. The ten horns represents the ten, uh, ten common markets, which later on changed to uh, 
28, 28 nations, man. So just uh look up the e the EU EU and you know it goes into uh the, the ten the ten nations, which turns into twenty eight nations now, man. It says, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh. And burn her with fire, right? So it's gonna be a point of time when those rumors of war are gonna stop, and America gonna be burned with thermonuclear fire by uh, uh, Russia, uh, uh, a lot of uh, them uh, Middle Eastern nations, and that's in the, uh, the apocrypha, um, Second Ezra chapter sixteen, uh, the Carmenians, and not only them. Um, the uh the ten horns which turn into twenty eight nations which is the uh, EU man it says uh and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for the Most High hath put in their hearts in their hearts is their mind to fulfill His will right so all this talking shit is pretty soon going to be done with and you know the Lord controlling the controlling the whole thing man you know it's gonna be a time when the Lord say okay enough. Now, burn with fire, and that's what's going to happen. It says, For the Most High put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast unto the words of the Most High shall be fulfilled. Okay. Yeah, so ultimately America going to get hit by a thermonuclear fire, man. You know, because that's biblical prophecy. I got one more scripture. This is Micah chapter 2. Is it 2? Wait, 2. Hold on. Uh okay no nah, that that that's it I can't find the scripture when I find it I'm just put it up by itself <laughs> yeah right this are but yeah man America gonna get hit by thermonuclear fire man you know because it's prophecy man and these little wars and conflicts that's going on in the Middle East is uh you know just getting everybody ready for the uh, the battle I'm getting these uh test tests that's being took in place and these um these um. These uh, what do you call them? These um, drills that they doing is actually getting everybody ready for what's to come. Still looking for it. All right, yeah, that's it for the lesson. Uh, all praise to the Lord God. Double honors to the elders and apostles that rule well, and salutations to the brothers that's doing the truth with sincerity. Shalom.
Um, I think that it would aim at North Korea, for example, freezing at least um, further testing, and of course for the Americans to tune down not only the rhetoric uh, but also military exercises and 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 and, and a lot of threats uh, that could only stabilize the system. But then the, the um, stability pact should also ensure that um, um, all the countries move on to from a paradigm of coercion to a paradigm of incentives. Um, so both sides, um, on a gradual basis, um, combined with um, even opportunities for economic cooperation. I think that's the only way to stabilize the long-term um, um, situation. Sure. Uh, many because people, what, uh, Andrew, many people who so, just jump in there will say, well, look, all that sounds very logical, but we seem to be a, a very far away from anything like that from happening. Yes, uh, absolutely, because um, 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 uh, the United States and Trump administration uh, believes that um, the solution is through military means. Um, that's the only tool in the in in, in the work kit, and it hasn't uh, proved to be successful. Because you know, if you want to at attack the uh, the North Koreans, and then these missiles are hidden in caves and they are mobile, um, and then of course uh, you can you can't be sure that you're going to take out everything, and then at the end of the day, it would only stabilize the entire. Um, North Korean Peninsula, and the talk of, of decapitation also doesn't work either because you you can't just send in a, in a, in, in um, a, a small number of troops, um, including the, even the South Koreans, um, because after you stabilize the regime, what are you going to do? The whole thing would implode, um, and then you've got to send in more troops, and that that would of course um, um, Russia and China are not going to. Uh, set, um, stand aside and watch this happening. So I think that this, um, any other options would um, destabilize this, this situation even further. Mm. So I think that the, uh, all sides have got to uh, come and grasp the nettle, as it were. Okay, Andrew, look, really appreciate your insights on this. That was Andrew K.P. Lung, um, an international independent Asia strategist. Thank you.